guys, welcome back to my channel and today I have a case video for you which I've been planning on doing for a while now. I've been really wanting to get into these psychological cases and I just wanted to start by saying that I've got my new sweatshirt which is from AP Clothing. Um, it's not a sponsorship or anything like that, I've just been like wanting this for ages and I got it yesterday and I just really love it so yeah go check that out I'll link it in the description so today's video is about Jeannie um, which was this young girl who was found at her home and she had been basically abused for her whole life so basically there's a lot of conflicting evidence and information about this um, story so I'm just collecting information from what I've found on the internet and through articles and things. To start with I wanted to talk a bit about the family because um, Jeannie's mother and father were not really, they never wanted to be parents, um, certainly her father didn't want to be a parent, um, his mother actually died and a lot of these articles say that that's what made him quite angry. They did have a uh, few children actually. Um, the first child uh, was unfortunately um, left in a cold garage I believe. I don't know if it was like neglect or accidental but um, the baby unfortunately died um, from that incident. So yeah eventually they did have uh, children. They had one boy who was Jeannie's brother and he was older than her. Um, he didn't have a very good life at home. He was quite depressed as you can imagine his dad was a very angry man apparently he abused him and beat him then Jeannie was born and with Jeannie it was I don't know what changed but it was kind of a different story they really just didn't care about this child at all she was found in 1970 at 13 years old she weighed just 59 pounds and I looked it up and the typical weight for a child of this age is like 75 to like 100 and I think it was 145 and she was just 59 so that was like way way below what she should have been. So the first person to ever see Jeannie was the police officer called Frank Lindley and he was the one who arrived at the scene and he said that he'd never ever seen anything like it. Um, when he initially went in he saw no sign of like a child living there and so it was really dark there was no light apparently things you get a lot of stimulation from the sunlight it tells you sort of like your biological clock what time of day it is when you should be sleeping when you should be awake so it like it really does affect you and you wouldn't believe but it really does um and she was just kept in pretty much total darkness and when they went in her room there was basically nothing there was like um this cot and it had been basically covered with things so that she couldn't escape most of the day she was just chained to her potty and that was sort of really it like she was all the time chained up or locked away so she couldn't even move when they actually got there she was unable to walk properly so she basically couldn't do anything she couldn't even properly like straighten her limbs I can imagine because of the confinement or perhaps that just she'd never learnt to do something like that because she'd never been subject to any interaction at all with anyone. The reason that they actually end up, ended up finding her was that her mum suffered with cataracts. She ended up accidentally going into the social work office. I'm not quite sure how this happened but she ended up speaking with a social worker anyway and they came to visit her house. So by this point they could quite clearly see that the child had been beaten as with uh, Jeannie's brother as well had been beaten. Um, so yeah obviously this was not the environment that they were going to leave her in and she did get taken away um, to the hospital eventually um, and then on to uh, child services. They basically found out that what had happened is that she had had no contact with anyone apart from her father. Her brother was not allowed to speak to her, I think her mother also was not allowed to speak to her or engage in any contact with her. Um, so basically she was treated like not even a human, like she wasn't even there. She screamed or something, often her dad would like 
bark or make grunting noises at her. Normally in these cases you still have contact with the with some kind of outside world but Jeannie just didn't have this um, and because of that she didn't even learn to properly walk, to talk um, for 13 years of her life like and what's even sadder is that when they took her in is that she, they found out that she could tell sort of stories through pictures and things like she could um put pictures together and she did um was eventually able to say like small words to like put together um so it was clear that she could think there was obviously legal proceedings around this her father committed suicide the day of his court hearing so i'm just gonna go into a little bit of psychological detail i'm gonna try not to be like too <laughs> overwhelming in the 1960s so this wasn't actually that long before um, this case. Chomsky had this theory that everyone had a language acquisitional device. It sounds very electronical but it wasn't, it was more like theoretical. Within their brain they had this ability, this innate ability to produce language and that's why humans could learn language as quickly as we do. At the similar sort of time there was Eric Lenderberg um, who published work about the critical period and he estimated that between two and twelve years was when you sort of were able to learn um the language basically things like grammar um sentences so that was the main theory that sort of surrounded this case and everyone wanted to know is it too late for this girl she's past the this critical period said so that was from this researcher obviously at the time like still now it's very widely debated when this critical period is unless we look at sort of deprivation cases where people are deprived of language which morally you can't do experimentally obviously you can't just experiment on someone and say we're not gonna talk to you or communicate with you for 12 years because that's just so unethical <laughs> But to start with about her mental abilities, so when they first tested her, she had the mental ability of a one-year-old uh, on mental tests. And initially she actually had really rapid progress in terms of learning new words. This is quite typical of young children to have this growth period where they learn words really quickly. Getting out and by stimulating yourself really helps because you see more things, you can learn new words when you go out and things, and people were helping her do this, so that was really good for her to go out um, and see things she'd never ever seen at 13 years old. She never fully um, recovered in her walking, she could walk um, but she had a sort of like limp, I think they, they called it like a bunny hop I think. But unfortunately after this stage of at one year of only being able to put three words together, she never really passed this stage of language unfortunately. It's a really sad um, story that she could never speak fully and fully tell her story. There was a funding program for her for research for Jeannie so she was able to stay um, mostly with psychologists. I think the first person to look after her was Butler, the rehabilitation teacher, but unfortunately there was a lot of clashes over who she was going to stay with. I know that one of the researchers, Curtis, um, was heavily involved in her treatment and helping her learning I think she really wanted to care for Jeannie. There's a lot of debate about whether this was just to sort of make breakthroughs in her case and whether their intentions were right or not. Going back and forth between places is just not a good environment for someone who needs just stability and proper learning. Eventually the funding for her research was taken away and in 1975 her mother um, took legal action against all these people that were trying to fight for Jeannie basically. She no longer wanted them to be fighting over her, they didn't want her to them to be researching on her anymore and she did end up going back into the care of her mother which was sort of the worst outcome I think that could possibly have happened but this didn't end up well unfortunately due to Jeannie's situation she needed proper care her mother couldn't uh, handle it and she ended up going back into an adult care home unfortunately and she stayed in adult institutions for the rest of her life the sort of contact with her psychologists and the people that were helping her was completely removed they still wanted her to do well and they were really hoping that she would learn language and the fact that they wanted that could have encouraged more development from her but the fact that this was all removed and she could no longer 
um, speak to these people who were the only people who could really have ever helped her um, was really tragic and she ended up regressing i don't know if that was the fact that she just didn't like the environment she was in or whether you know it just so overwhelming for her but she was uh, it is said that she was quite silent um in her time in her care homes so that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this sort of psychological case and i'm looking to do more of these kind of videos um they're super interesting and i like that i can add a little bit of my psychological knowledge in there and then um also like just share with you guys these sort of stories that are just very unusual let me know if you have any particular cases or experiments that you want me to talk about um that you may have heard of and want to know a bit more about um or any true crime cases i'm also looking into doing those even though it's a lot harder to get information about <laughs> true crime out there but um, i'm gonna give it a go and we'll see what happens. I shall see you in my next video. Bye!